Praise the Lord, church. Good morning. I'm happy I won't have to go into work tomorrow. <laughs> Hope it's the same with you. Uh, uh, while I set up, um, can I? I'll distract you with a small with a question. Um, does anybody here like dogs? Anybody here like dogs? <laughs> Ever been bitten by a dog? Show of hands. Uh, did you get uh, 14 uh, injections on your belly after you got bitten by a dog? <laughs> I, I got 14. <laughs> uh, so, yes. <clears throat> uh, over the course of my uh, childhood, we had about four to five dogs, and the, um, my claim to fame, fame among our family circles is um, that I got bitten by each and every one of those dogs. Um, and uh, it was so bad that uh, my parents actually, they, I think they found it more cost effective and more efficient to get the dogs uh, vaccinated and all of that than to get me treated each and every time. So it was that bad, but like it was good times. Um, I was lucky, and I was like, I thank God for the time in which He chose to um, uh, create me on this earth. Because if the same thing had happened in biblical times, um, the chances of you surviving the dog's bite is uh, very bleak. Because um, in those days, if the dog was rabid, and you uh, got the virus, your only solution would be to keep looking at water. And then after 14 days, if you showed symptoms, you would have to be isolated. And then most likely, you would die a very slow and painful death. So thankful for the uh, medical interventions today, which um, have uh, allowed me to survive uh, those dog bites. But the reason I was bringing this up is um, because because of this characteristic uh, that dogs, like when they bite, you could get uh, uh, rabies and it was very difficult to treat it. Back in those days, people did not uh, treat dogs the way that we treat them today. They were kept uh, at a distance. Even if they had dogs, they would be like a farm animal or something. They would be kept at a distance. Not people. People didn't like very few people would actually interact with them and like play with them as much as uh, uh, we do. Um, and the because of this kind of scenario, um, people back then, uh, if anybody who did not belong to a certain group or a, a certain community. Um, they would be, uh, like in the Middle East, this was very prevalent in the Middle East, I'm talking about the Middle East, the thing. they would actually refer to people, um, those dogs, those dogs, like when they said that term, when they used that term, it was to, uh, to talk about somebody who had to be kept at a distance. So that was the reference for them to use this uh, term. Now, why am I talking so much about dogs and dog bites and uh, peep, keeping uh, people at a distance? For that, um, I thought I, I won't create any slides today. I thought I'll mix it up a bit and um, I'll get everybody to read, look into their Bibles. So for that, can I get everybody to look at Matthew chapter 15? And let us read from uh, verse 21. So Matthew chapter 15. And I'm reading from verse 21. Then Jesus went thence, departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the, the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not. Uh, but he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 
Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. As her daughter was made whole from that very hour. And Jesus departed from thence and came nigh, <coughs> and came nigh unto the sea of Galilee and went up in, unto a mountain and sat down there. Wow. That was a powerful uh, verse or a powerful scene. Like the first time I read this um, scene, it kind of struck me. It was like we always know Christ as someone who's very loving and very, um, uh, who's very merciful. And then when you read this verse, this, uh, this dialogue here, it is, it is very confronting. It sounds like why is, why is Christ being so rude with this woman? What's, what's the reason for this? Why is he being so rude with her? If we take this as a, as a scene, like as a, as a drama, um, and we break it down, and we go down into, into this, uh, there are three, basic three characters here. One is the woman, the second is Christ, and the third are his disciples and, his, and the audience that are with uh, Christ. So the, let's talk about the woman first. Like, we, we, from this passage, when we read this, uh, we see that um, this woman was not casual in her approach. She was very meticulous. She was very, um, she, was, she had conviction. She, she was a woman of great faith. She was not somebody who just heard about Christ. We know that she's a Canaanite woman, but she was not somebody who just heard about Christ, uh, came there to see him, and then as a bonus, if her daughter got uh, healed, then that was a bonus. That was not her attitude. She sought him. She sought him and she, 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 she knew that he was the only person who would be able to cure her, uh, cure her daughter or save her from that situation. How do we know this? Let's look at Mark. Let's go to Mark. Um, and if we go to Mark chapter 7... And... Mark chapter 7, and uh, let's look at verse 24. And it says, And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered into a house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. So basically Christ, we, we're looking this the same story uh, from a different pers person's perspective. It, uh, this is Mark's perspective. So Christ actually went into a house, and he, he, was, he was trying to be away from the limelight, or public eye. He wanted to be secluded. He wanted to be hidden. He did not want to be found. And yet, if you see verse 25, he was, not, he was not able to achieve that purpose. Why? Because if you see verse 25, it says, For a, woman, for a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. So she was somebody, she did not um, rest, she did not, she had, she came there with great conviction and though he could not be found, he, she searched for him, she sought him out and she found, she found him and she was pleading with him. So this is a woman of great faith, not somebody who was just casually there and uh, uh, so, so, so we can understand that. She was somebody who was, literally she believed that he is the only one who could save her save her daughter. So that was the woman's faith. And that is something um, which was very, which was the reason she was able to achieve her purpose. Now let's move on and let's look at the second character, like uh, Christ. Now when we pray to God, um, most likely three things can happen. Um, we may get an answer immediately. Um, like in the case of um, uh, 
Samuel or so, sorry Elijah or Manasseh like when they prayed uh, there, there was there something happened immediately like if you look at Elijah's case on the Mount of Carmel um, where when he prayed for uh, God to come down and accept the sacrifice God sent down his fire and even the water started uh, it, water was alight it, it, uh, it took up flames like that was immediate Elijah prayed immediately something happened Manasseh was, um, he was uh, caught by the, uh, he was captured by the enemy, uh, enemies, and uh, he, he humbled himself, he prayed, and then even, eventually his kin- kingdom was restored to him, and uh, he, he had a second chance. These were something which were immediate, like, and sometimes when we pray, it can take a long time for God to answer. He, in, we notice that in Abraham's case, it, it, it took, um, uh, it, it took about 24 years before uh, God answered his prayers. We see how Moses, for 40 years, God uh, uh, had to test him uh, in the desert, in the wilderness. We see in Joseph's case, for 13 years. So sometimes God answers immediately, sometimes he takes a long time. And sometimes the answer is completely different. Like you pray for something and God does, he, you, he, you pray to go in this direction, God says you go this direction. We see that in, Nineveh, uh, in uh, Jonah's case. He did not want to go to Nineveh. He, 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 did not li- he did not like the way God wanted to treat the citizens of Nineveh, but like God had something completely different. He had some, something completely different for them. Um, likewise, if we, uh, if we see uh, David, in David's case, he was uh, praying for his son uh, with Bathsheba, the first son. He was playing, praying for something completely different, but God did not allow it. He wanted something completely different. So, um, uh, it, it is very possible these three different scenarios can happen. When we pray to God, he may answer it immediately, he may not answer it, uh, he may take his own time, and he, third thing is he may want something completely different for us. But this morning, I do not know what a situation you are going through. It may be financially, it may be praying for a, a job breakthrough, it may be some of your exams, it may be... Um, whatever the situation, you, if you've been uh, finances, health, personal uh, relationships, you could be praying for something for so long and you feel that God is not answering. Is God even listening to my prayers? But let me remind you, brothers and sisters, like God, our God, the God that we worship, he's an omnipotent. He's, he's all-knowing. He, he, he knows the situation. He knows the conditions that you are in. Then why does he allow it? Sometimes he allows it because this thorn in our flesh is what keeps us humble. Many a times that's the case. The thorn that we are facing in our, in our lives, that is what keeps us humble and that is what keeps us from, um, uh, from destroying ourselves sometimes. So, so um, well, let's coming back to the scene. Did God did not know what this woman wanted? Did uh, God did not know what she was going to say, and didn't God did not know about her faith? Definitely, definitely no. He God he he knows eternity past to eternity future, so he definitely knew what this woman's conviction was, what her faith was, what she was going to say, what what the reaction is going to be, and then why? So then why why was he so rude? That brings us to the third character in this uh, uh, scene. The the audience or the disciples. Now, in the actual scene, there is very little. Uh, you, you actually see there's only uh, one verse which refers to them. But let's roll back a little. Let's go back to the start of uh, in Matthew chapter 15. Let's go back to the first verse. Let's see what, what happens there. Um, Matthew chapter 15, uh, verse 1. Then came Jesus... Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. So they did not have anything else to pick a bone with. They come to Jesus and they are complaining. They are trying to show Jesus and his disciples in poor light. They are saying that why do you are... Disciples not wash their hands when they, when they eat, before they eat. This was the only thing that they had uh, to pick uh, a fight with. Um, 
so jesus i answers them he puts them back in their place he he tells he to, he calls them he calls them out for their hypocrisy and he puts them back in their in their in the place so this must be a very kind of a a, a puffing moment for for his disciples they must have been really puffed up he, they must have been thinking yeah he showed them where he showed them he really talked to them he he showed them their place so they must have been re- feeling really good about themselves so f- they are coming from that background and if you go to ver- let's go to um verse uh, uh verse tr- sorry sorry let's go to verse 23 uh, the verse about uh, the disciples let's go to verse 23 matthew 23 15 verse 23 but he answered her not a word and the disciples came and besought him saying send her away for she crieth after us so they're just saying send her away this woman is crying after us and uh, so they're not inter- I, i don't think they were very interested in her situation or what her problem was or trying to resolve it they were like just let's send her away she she is a canaanite woman most pro- this is this must be most most likely this must be their thought process uh, she's a canaanite woman she the only reason she's probably here is so that she can benefit from christ she can get uh, her daughter cured and she can go away um, so that's the only reason here she's here she's probably not here to learn about christ to to learn about god or to be to be more associated with god that's not her purpose so let's just send her away brush her off so in fact what the pharisees and the scribes were doing they the disciples also were in the same kind of this thing position they were precariously close to what they were doing they they were um, uh, they were kind of trying to brush this person away uh, and move her along the sidelines um and god knew this and he was trying to he knew of this woman's faith and he was using this opportunity to teach his disciples to teach them uh, something very valuable and very important he was many a times we do this we 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 look at people different for their different abilities for their it could be so many different things something as simple as even driving like when we see somebody driving in a in an erratic fashion we subconsciously we judge them we 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 make um, we have we take decisions we 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 judge people based on the choices they make the based on their financial choices they make based on their words based on their action it's a constant cycle of that we keep doing we we constantly do that we um we we'll, we try to and sometimes in our own ho- homes in the privacy of our own own homes we talk about different peoples maybe even members from the church will be talking about them how they did this how they do that uh, this is not that is not the correct way to do it we we talk about so so many things and the, basically the this thing is to kind of show the other person in in poor light this is something that we have to be very mindful of because when we fa- find fault with people and when we criticize them and when we put them and put them down and when our words and our, when when the words that come out of our lip actually bring people down tear them down and uh, 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 and uh, uh, break them we use the same lips to come into god's presence and say god you are wonderful you are amazing you are almighty you are all powerful Uh, but but like it's like it's like saying god you are all these things but the creation that you made in your own image this person that you made in your own image he is basically an idiot so god you are all good you are this thing but like you are you are finding fault with his creation and this thing so it it is very important for us this morning uh, to to be mindful that we are in the presence of the almighty god he is the one who judges not only our actions but even the intentions of our heart and so this is something that we need to be very mindful of we can we we are in the we can rejoice that we are in the presence of the living god but at the same time it is a this is a reminder to be very cautious of the thoughts of our heart also so 
before um, uh, I finish, so in, in summary, I picked out two verses which, which um, I, I felt like kind of um, uh, would summarize this whole message that I'm trying to say here. One is from uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse uh, 6. It says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So this woman had that kind of faith. She, she believed that he was God and he is the only one who would be able to save him, say save her daughter. And likewise, if I can get everybody to look at uh, First Chronicles um, verse, uh, chapter 28 and verse 9. This is um, uh, so, uh, David's words to his son Solomon. And it says, As for you, my son Solomon, know your God, <clears throat> know the God of your father, and serve him with a whole heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands every intent of the, of the, of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will, le <clears throat> he, <clears throat> he will let you find him. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. So, with, with that, I just I would like to uh, close, but um, I would just like to remind you, um, we are, before we enter into the presence of the Lord, we need to remember and we need to um, ask the Lord to forgive us of any of our um, uh, unintentional, even if it was unintentional, uh, if we have spoken about uh, anybody, we need to ask him for forgiveness and enter into his presence and worship him for who he is and what he has done for, for in our lives. Thank you. <clears throat>